Hey there. How on a do? How on a do is how you say how are you doing in Gullah. Gullah is a language spoken mostly by people of West African descent who live along the coast of South Carolina, Georgia, some parts of North Carolina, and some parts of Florida. But really, Gullah people have traveled almost everywhere <laughs> speaking the Gullah language. The word una means you. So when I say how una but do, it is how are you doing? So how are you doing? Me? I'm doing good, good. And I want to welcome you to my studio today. Now I am a painter, an artist, and a storyteller. And today it's all about the story. I'd like to start with a story that has its origins or begins in West Africa. It's a story about a spider and his name is a Nazi. Now, you know about spiders, right? You see spiders? I saw one in my kitchen today, it was so big. But even though it was a big spider, it still had eight legs. And eight, well, pretty thin, skinny legs. Cause you know, most spiders have eight thin, skinny legs. Not a Nazi, no. A Nazi had eight big, thick, strong legs. And when a Nazi walked through the village, you heard him coming. But one day, a Nazi was on his way to the river. Now, I don't know why he was going to the river, but he had some plans down there. And as he was walking through the village, folk could hear a Nazi stomping through with his big, thick legs. But suddenly he stopped because he smelled something. Mmm, he said to himself. That smells like jollof rice. But jollof rice it's, it's a red rice, and in South Carolina, we just call it red rice, but in some parts of Africa, they call it jollof rice. Pretty much the same. And Nazi, he sniffed the air. Mm hmm That smells like jollof rice, and mm, it smells like it's coming from Lion's house. So Nazi walked up to Lion's house, and when he got there, he knocked on the door. And, and Lion came to the door, peeked out, he opened the door. He said, well, hello, a Nazi. And a Nazi said, well, hello there, Lion. Do I smell jollof rice? And Lion said, yes, yes, a Nazi, you do smell jollof rice. And a Nazi said, well, can I have some, please? And Lion said, well, 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 a Nazi, I would love to share my jollof rice, but it's not ready yet. Well, why don't, why don't you come inside and wait? And then when the jollof rice stews down and all the flavors is moved through the rice, well, then you can have some. And a Nazi said, oh, that sounds so good. But you know, Lion, I, I was going to the river. So, so tell you what, why don't I spin a web and tie, tie one part of that web to that pot of jollof rice? And the other part goes to one of my arms. And then when that jollof rice is ready, you just give that web a tug and I'll come running. And Lion agreed. And so a Nazi spun a web, whoosh, tied one end to that pot of jollof rice and the other to one of his big thick arms and then he set off to the river. Mm, I'm gonna yum up some jollof rice. But, but he hadn't gotten far when he, oh he smells something else. Could that be Kalaloo? Well Kalaloo is greens you know and here in South Carolina we'll, we eat greens. I love collard greens. You might eat greens too but in some parts of the world, in some parts of Africa, they might call it kanalu. Mmm, said a Nazi. And he, he, he sniffed his way to Monkey's door and he knocked on the door. And Monkey, Monkey came to the door and he opened the door and he said, Well, hello, Nazi. And Nazi said, Well, hi there, Monkey. Do I smell kanalu? And Monkey said, Well, well, yes, you do smell kanalu, Nazi. And a Nazi said, well, can I have some, please? And, and Monkey said, well, I would love to have you, to have you have some, but it's, it's not ready yet. You know, you've got to steam that, that Kalaloo really good to get all the spices in. But if you like, you can come in and wait. But a Nazi said, no, no, I'm going to the river. But tell you what, Monkey, why don't I spin a web? We can tie one end of that web to that pot of Jola, of that pot of Kalaloo. And the other to one of my arms, and then 
when that color blue is ready, you just give that web a tug and I'll come running. And Monkey agreed. And so, Anansi did. And then off he went to the river. Mm -hmm. I'm going to yam up something good. But then, do I spell, smell yams? And it seems like it's coming from Gorilla's house. And off he went to Gorilla's house. And he knocked on the door. And Gorilla came to the door. Hello, Anansi. Hello, Gorilla. Do I smell yam with honey? Yams, you know, like, like sweet potatoes. And Gorilla said, Yes, Anansi, you do smell yams with honey. And Anansi said, can I have some, please? And Gorilla said, well, well, Anansi, you know, it, it takes a while to, to cook it, but, but why don't you come in the house and you can tell um, the children some stories. They love hearing your stories. And then when it's ready, we can all have some yams with honey. But Anansi said, no, 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 I'm on my way to the river. But tell you what, why don't I spin a web? Tie one end to that pan of yams and honey. The other one of my arms, and then when it's ready, you just give that web. And I'll come running. And so he did. And off he went down to the river. But every now and then, he smells something and he'd make it stop. He'd smell something up. And finally, as he was almost to the river, he was like, oh, I'm going to yam up good food today. In Gullah, the word yam means to eat. And so he planned to yam up some good food. And he had almost gotten to the river. When suddenly there was a tug. Oh, well, that Jollof rice must be ready. But then there was another tug. Well, that Kalaloo must be ready. And then there was another tug. Oh, well, those yams must be ready. And then another tug. And another, and another, and another. Until Anansi was being pulled this way, and that way, and that way, and this way. And he struggled against all those pulls and all those tugs. Until finally he, he fell forward into the river. Water washed the webs away. But when a Nazi stood up, he did not have a big, thick, strong leg. Mm -mm. He had eight thin, wobbly little legs. And by the time a Nazi had wobbled his way back to the village, well, everybody had yam up their own food. And, and, and the only thing a Nazi had to eat was the meal that his wife had fixed for him in the first place. Mm -hmm. And you see, that's what's happened when you get the big eye. In Gullah, when we say someone has the big eye, that means they're greedy. That means they want to eat everything they see. They got the big eye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I like that story about a Nazi. And one thing that that story does, it tells you about some of the foods that people eat in a Gullah Geechee community, like along the coast of South Carolina, or Georgia or Florida, or other places that people of West African descent live, like the Caribbean, the West Indies, South America. You'll always find that we love to eat rice dishes, green dishes, and sometimes a good yam. <laughs> Well, you know, the West Africans who were brought to this country were brought here largely because they knew how to grow rice, particularly those who were brought here to South Carolina. Along the coast of South Carolina, there are many rivers and marshes. And where I live in Georgetown, South Carolina, six rivers run through the county down to the ocean. And these are freshwater rivers. And in all the marshes around those rivers, well, that was just the perfect conditions for growing rice. Now on the coast of West Africa, there are also perfect conditions for growing rice. The planters who had taken the land along the coast of South Carolina knew that rice would grow here, but they didn't know anything about growing rice. So as part of the slave trade, they went to West Africa and they brought back rice farmers. Now these rice farmers did not agree to come 
As a matter of fact, they did not want to come. As a matter of fact, they were brought here completely against their will. They didn't have uh, a time to like get a get a backpack of their favorite things or to put something in their pockets or to, to bring anything with them. Everything of value that came here, those West Africans, the ancestors of the Bella Gucci people, came here in their heads with what they knew, in their hands with what they could do, and in their hearts with what they believed. And using what they knew, what they could do, what they believed, they, in the most difficult conditions, built a life for themselves here on the coast of South Carolina and then throughout the rest of the world. And among the things they brought with them were songs and stories. So I'll share another story with you. And this is a story that is also a West African story. And then I'll share a Gullah Geechee story. I like this story. Um, well, I'll tell you why in a little bit. It is from a village in Western Africa many years ago. And there was a man there. He was a very important man in his village and a very good man. And he had four sons. They were big sons and he would take them with him when he went hunting or, 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 or doing heavy work because in this village, the men did the heavy work and they did all of the hunting and the women, well, they took care of the gardens and they raised the babies and they took care of, um, of the household. And one day, this man said to his wife, I am going hunting and I'm taking our sons with me. And his wife said, oh, oh, don't take the boys with you today because you know I'm expecting another child. And right now I can't do any heavy lifting. I can't do any of the heavy work in the garden. I can't do any of the wood chopping. So could you leave the boys here with me? And their father said, well, okay, certainly I'll, I shouldn't be gone. And so he left his sons there to help their mother and he gathered up his weapons and he went out across the field and then into the woods and he was gone. And the boys stayed and they helped their mother. They did all the heavy digging in the garden and they did all the heavy pulling and they did all the heavy lifting and they did all the heavy chopping. And at the end of the day, they gathered around the fire for their evening meal. And as they were eating, one son said, hmm, father isn't back yet. And the other said, hmm. You're right, father isn't back yet. And then they, they, they finished their meal and, and they went to bed. And the next day they woke up and they did the same thing. They did all the heavy digging and the heavy lifting and the heavy chopping and at dinner time as they sat to eat, one of the sons said, huh, father's not back yet. And they had their meal and they went to bed. And this went on day after day until soon, no one even said, father isn't back yet. And the time came when the mother gave birth to another child, another little boy. And well, the baby did what babies do. You know, it cried, eh, it learned to crawl. It learned to pull itself up and soon it learned to speak. And the first thing the baby said was, where is my father? And his brother said, that, that's right, father isn't back yet. Well, maybe you should go and look for him. So the four boys, got their weapons and they got some supplies and they went off across the field and they entered the woods where they had seen their father enter. And they followed a trail until they lost them in the woods. And then they weren't sure which way to go. But then the oldest son said, you know what? I know this has never come up before, but you know that I have some magic. And that other brother said, yes, of course. And he said, well, you know, I can, I can sniff out the faintest scent. I can sniff out father's trail. And his brother said, well, you should do that then. So he, until he caught the scent of his father and he began to go along the trail. It was overgrown and they bushwhacked their way through. And every time they got lost, he would, until they found the trail again. And finally they bushwhacked their way through until they came out to a clearing. And in the clearing were their father's weapons resting and some scattered bones. And they said, oh, 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 we're too late. Oh, what are we gonna do? And then the second brother said, well, you know, 
you know that I have some magic. And his brother said, well, of course you do. And he said, well, you see, I have the ability to knit bones back together. And his brother said, well, you should do it then. So the second brother stood over his father's bones and began to speak. And as he spoke, the bones began to come back together. The skull attached itself to the jaw. And the spinal column. And the shoulders. And the arm bones. Down to the fingers. All the way down the spinal column. To the hips. Down the legs. All the way to the toes. Until the father's skeleton lay there in the field. In the clearing. But it was just a skeleton. And as the brothers stood around the skeleton, the third son said, Oh, you know, <clears throat> I have some magic. And his brother said, Well, of course you do, of course you do. And he said, Well, I I know how to 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 wrap a skeleton with muscle and skin and veins and everything in it. And his brother said, Well, you should do it. So, so the third brother, he, he stood over the skeleton and he began to speak. And as he began to speak, the red muscle began to wrap itself all the way over his father's body. And then the skin until the father's body lay there in the clearing. But he was dead. And then the fourth son said, I think it's time for my magic. You know, I can, I can, I can breathe life into a body. And the other brother said, "Ooh, well, you should do it then." So the fourth son stood over his father's body. And he took in a deep breath, and he blew. And his father said, and opened his eyes and sat up. And when he saw his sons, he said, "You found me. You came for me." I'm so glad. And he got up and his sons hugged him and they wrapped him in clothing and they gathered his weapons and they began to follow the trail they had cut through the woods all the way back to the village. And as they were coming out of the woods into the field, the other villagers looked up and they saw them and they said, are there five of them? They must have found their father. And one went to get his wife and they all went to run and greet the father and his sons, and they hugged them and they greeted them and they were so glad. And when his wife came out, she was so happy. She was in tears and he embraced his wife. And then he said, I have something I want to say. And everyone was quiet because he was an important man. He said, I am so grateful to have been found. Wife, let's have a festival to celebrate my return. Let us kill the fattest cow. And, and we'll have a big barbecue and a big celebration. And as soon as that cow is ready, we will have the feast. And everyone said, yay. He said, but when you kill the cow, bring me its tail. And so they slaughtered the cow to cook and they, and they brought the man, the cow, the tail. And, and, and this man, he cleaned the tail and he cured the tail and he wrapped it with gold and with silk. And soon it was the most beautiful cow tail switch you'd ever seen. The kind of switch only carried by a very important man. And so the preparations of, for the feast went on all week, and everywhere that he went, he carried his cow tail switch. And finally, it was time for the feast. Oh, and there was drumming, and there was dancing, and there was singing, and there was eating, and it was a good, good, good time. And finally, as the evening wore on, he raised up his switch, and he said, I have something I want to say, He said, I was gone and now I'm back and, and, and I want to give this cowtail switch to the one who did the most to bring me back. And the first one said, the first son said, oh, well, that would be me. That would be me. You see, no one knew how to find you, but I, I sniffed out your trail in the woods and I found you. But the second son said, no, 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 that would be me because when we found you, you were nothing but bones and I am the one who knit all your bones together. But the third son said, oh, no, 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 that would be me because what were you if you were just a skeleton? But I, I wrapped your, your skeleton with muscle and vessels and skin and, and, and gave you your body back. But the fourth one said, so what is a body without breath? It would be me because I breathed the breath into you. And the brothers began to fight. It would be me. It'd be me. It'd be me. It'd be me. They just fought and fought until finally the father raised up his cocktail switch. And he said, I have made a decision. 
I am going to give this switch to. And he handed the switch to the baby. Yes, because he said, one is not truly gone until one is forgotten. End of story. Memory is an amazing, wonderful thing. The thing is, is that we now, in our community, we are living on the memories of our ancestors, the things they brought here in their minds, the stories they told, the songs they sang, the skills they knew. Among those skills are sweetgrass basket making. I'll share one with you. I'm back. This is a sweet grass basket. It has been made for hundreds of years by the Gullah Geechee people who live along the coasts of South Carolina and Georgia. There's a large concentration of basket makers right near Charleston. Now, as you can see, it is made of marsh grass, known as sweet grass because of the fragrance. This one also has bulrush and pine needles and the Coils of grass are sewn together with dried palmetto leaves, things that are found around here. In their wisdom and their knowledge, they looked for what was here to make what they wanted and what they needed. Now, these baskets used to be used for work, and now they're largely used for beauty. Well, you know, I went to West Africa last year, and I went to a village where they are making these baskets. Now, in this village, they do them a little differently. After all, it's been many years. They cover their sweet grass with colored palm leaf. But basically it's done the same way, coils sewn together. This one from Africa, this one from right near Charleston, brought here in the memories of the West Africans who were brought across the water. Didn't have YouTube, didn't have Google, but they had memory. They knew what to do, they knew what they believed and they pass that down so that the person who made this basket learned it from her parents, who learned it from their parents, who learned it from their parents, who learned it from their parents, who, it from their parents, who brought it here from Africa in their minds and their hands. So I'm going to share one more story with you. Uh, this is a story um, that's just a lot of fun. I just love to tell it. Now, this story comes from not too far from here, somewhere near Charleston. And it is a story about a little girl. They called her little sister who lived with her daddy. Well, she lived with her daddy in this, in this little white house. And all around the house, there was a garden with every kind of flower you could imagine. And all around the garden, there was, there was a white fence with a gate in it. And all around the fence, there were woods. Now, now, little sister's daddy used to say to little sister, don't go out of the gate and into the woods because there are wolves in the woods. And little sister would say, don't worry, daddy, I won't. <laughs> now, little sister's favorite thing to do in the whole world was to pick flowers. And when she picked flowers, she liked to sing. And her favorite picking flower song went, Aunt Jenny's cornbread, sweet, sweet, sweet. Eat some, leave some, sweet, sweet, sweet. Aunt Jenny's cornbread, sweet, sweet, sweet. Eat some and leave some, sweet, sweet. Eat some and leave some, sweet, sweet. Well, one day, little sister's father came out and he said, little sister, I gotta go to town. Now, you know when I go, I always come back. But remember, while I'm gone, don't go out of that gate and into the woods because there are wolves in the woods. And little sister said, I know, I will, bye. So daddy went to town. And little sister continued picking flowers and singing her favorite picking flower song. Aunt Jenny's cornbread, sweet, sweet, sweet. Eat some, leave some, sweet, sweet, sweet. Aunt Jenny's cornbread, sweet, sweet, sweet. Eat some and leave some, sweet, sweet. Eat some and leave some, sweet, sweet. Well, 
Little sister had just picked a gate, a, a flower by the gate when she saw it. Right there on the other side of the gate, what she thought was the prettiest yellow flower she'd ever seen. Now, mind you, there were plenty of yellow flowers in her yard, but little sister, they weren't as pretty as the one just outside the gate. She said to herself, Daddy won't mind if I just open the gate and pick that one flower. You think he, he'd mind? Her little sister, she opened the gate and she stepped out and she picked that one yellow. Ooh, there's a red flower. And she picked that one. Ah, oh, there's a purple flower. And she picked that one. And before you knew it, little sister was just walking through the woods, picking flowers and singing her favorite picking flower song. Aunt Jen is cornbread, sweet, sweet, sweet. Eat some and leave some, sweet, sweet, sweet. Aunt Jen is cornbread, sweet, sweet, sweet. Eat some and leave some. Sweet, sweet, eat some and leave some. Sweet, sweet. Her little sister looked around and she had gone a lot farther from her yard than she meant to go. She turned to go running home and from out behind a tree jumped a wolf. Ha! Ha! The hell of a girl! Did you? Don't you move! Why don't you sing that sweetest, goodest song again? Oh, dear, cornbread, sweet, sweet, sweet. Eat some leaves, so sweet, sweet, sweet. I'm Jenny Cornbread, sweet, sweet, sweet. Eat some leaves, so sweet, sweet. Eat some leaves, so sweet, sweet. And the wolf asleep. When my little sister saw the wolf was sleeping, she went running as quickly and as quietly as she could towards the gate. Pip, 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 pip. But she heard a noise behind her. Pip, 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 pip. It was the wolf. Ha! Did you move? you sing that sweetest, goodest song again. <sighs> if you know the song, you can help us sing it. Aunt Jenny's cornbread, sweet, sweet, sweet. Eat some and leave some, sweet, sweet, sweet. Aunt Jenny's cornbread, sweet, sweet, sweet. Eat some and leave some, sweet, sweet. Eat some and leave some, sweet, sweet. And the wolf fell asleep again. So little sister running as quickly and as quietly as she could towards the gate. Bip, 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 bip. But she heard a noise behind her. Bip, 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 bip. It was the wolf. Ha! I think you moved! No, sir, Mr. Wolf, I didn't move. I didn't move. I, I, I've been right here picking flowers and singing songs the whole time, really. Singing songs and picking flowers the whole time, really. Mm -hmm. Sing that sweetest, goodest song again. <sighs> Aunt Jenny's cornbread, sweet, sweet, sweet. Eat some and leave some, sweet, sweet, sweet. Aunt Jenny's cornbread, sweet, sweet, sweet. Eat some and leave some, sweet, sweet. Eat some and leave some, sweet, sweet. And the wolf fell asleep again. So little sister went running as quickly as she could towards the gate. But she heard a noise behind her. But, but she was almost there. So she ran in and she slammed the gate shut in the wolf's face. And she was sweetest, goodest, safe. Sweet, sweet. <laughs> I have so much fun with that story. I have so much fun being the wolf. Now, the song that little sister sang, Aunt Jenny's Cornbread, is an old song from St. Simon's Island, which is in Georgia, in the Gullah Geechee community. And it's a song that children sang when they would go outside and play after school or after chores. You know, back then, they did not have cell phones. They did not have um, PlayStation or any of those things, Xbox. I don't even know what folks be playing with now. 
<laughs> so after you did your chores and your homework, or in the summer, you would go out and you would play with other children. You would jump rope, you would play jacks, you would do ring games like Miss Mary Mag or um, uh, Sally over the water. And sometimes they would do a game where they sing, Aunt Jenny's cornbread, sweet, sweet, sweet. Eat some and leave some, sweet, sweet, sweet. Aunt Jenny's cornbread, sweet, sweet, sweet. Eat some and leave some, sweet, sweet. Eat some and leave some, sweet, sweet. You know, another game they used to play that children still play is Miss Mary Mac. Any of y'all know Miss Mary Mac? That's a game that's been around a long time. When I was a little girl, which was, you know, like a hundred years ago, I used to play Miss Mary Mac with my friends at recess. We would get a circle, even number, normally girls, and we would play Miss Mary Mac until our hands were red. And sometimes when I visit schools, the children don't know Miss Mary Mac, I teach it to them. But that's an old game. I mean, children played it when my mother-in-law, my husband's mother, was a little girl. She was 102 when she died. She was born in 1913. And when she went to school, she played Miss Mary Mac. But she sang the song maybe differently than you know it. How do you know it? How about... Miss Mary Mac, 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 all dressed in black, 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 with silver buttons, 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 all down her back, back, back. She asked her mother, 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 for 15 cents, 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 to see that elephant, 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 jump over the fence, fence, fence. Is that how you know it? He just so high, high, high. He reached the sky, 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 and never came back, back, back to the 4th of July, lie, lie. Yeah. <laughs> well, my mother-in-law did it too, but she sang it different. She sang it like this. Miss Mary Mac, 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 all dressed in black, 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 with silver button, 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 all down her back, back, back. She went to the river, 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 but she couldn't get across, cross, cross. So she paid five dollar, dollar, dollar for the old gray horse, horse, horse. But the horse wouldn't pull, pull, pull. She swapped it for a bull, bull, bull. But the bull wouldn't holler, holler, holler. She swapped it for a dollar, dollar, dollar. But the dollar wouldn't spin, spin, spin. She took it in the grass, grass, grass. But the grass wouldn't grow, grow, grow. She got her ho, ho, ho. But the hole wouldn't chop, chop, chop. She took her to the shop, shop, shop. And the shop made money, money, money. Like bees make honey, honey, honey. <laughs> ah, she sang that for us so we would know how she played when she was a child. So what games are you playing now? What games do your teachers play? What games do your grown-ups play? Maybe you'd like to ask them sometime. So I want to thank you for being in my studio with me today and listening to me tell stories and watching me forget songs. <laughs> I've enjoyed my time with you today and I hope you are having a wonderful